Okay. So let's talk about load development. How, now that you've got this awesome percussion, inline, flint lock, wheel lock, match lock, whichever one you actually went for. Now that you got it, how do I know what to shoot out of it? As with any warning label, the manufacturer does give you a booklet. If it's brand new, you'll have that. If it's used, write to the manufacturer um, or use uh, Google or DuckDuckGo if you're not a Google fan um, or Bing because it's not Google. Um, I don't even know if they're still around. But um, get online, search for that manual. In the manual, you'll have your uh, you know, recommended starting and your max pressures. I would absolutely adhere to a max pressure in any of the manuals that you get. The reason being, the manufacturer has decided that that's a safety cutoff for you. And that's probably in the event that, like, let's just say you accidentally double charged a 90 grain load. Um, you know, so you put two 90 grain loads in there. The manufacturer is probably stopping you at a specific spot so that in the event you accidentally did that, um, you probably have a comfort blanket zone. It's the same theory that why I have reloading manuals from you know the, the 50s and 60s that will show 38 special at you know 900 feet a second, 980 feet a second, somewhere in there. Um, but in the modern ones I have, it shows those same loads as plus P loads because somewhere along the way somebody decided you know people can't be trusted and you need to be coddled and baby same thing with black powder there's no right or wrong in what you do but it's all about the pressures of the chamber um, and in this case it's you know the barrel where it sits near the breech so developing a load I would highly recommend that if you don't have one go get yourself a chronograph uh, today I was actually going to bring my chronograph out and we will see um, ideal it's actually an ideal day for chronographing with the exception of the snow uh, I'm still following there's like a late drizzly snow but uh, if you can get a chronograph borrow a chronograph if not uh, I ordered mine is a pro chrono uh, I think I paid 100 bucks for it you know they have them on eBay right now and uh, um, what is it it's the gray one um, I'll try to put a link uh, in my description um, but get one 100 bucks well worth the investment if you don't have one of those what you need to do before you touch your sights on flint locks muzzle loaders anything once you take off you can't put back on without drifting out of the front sight and going so get a load and get your ball if it's a uh, let's just say it's a, a 50 cal, we'll keep it simple. You've got a 490 option, 0 .490, and you've got a 0 .495 option. And those options, let me see. <clears throat> so if you go with a 490 ball, that leaves you 10 thousandths of an inch to take up in patch material to get your 50 cal 0 0.50 diameter. You can slug a barrel, which means you take a piece of lead and drive it through the barrel. In order to do that with a muzzle loader, you would want to take off the breech end, uh, which I don't recommend you do. So go off where the manufacturer says. Start with a 490 ball. It gives you a 10 thousandths of an inch thickness that uh, you can play around with with patch thickness. So the tighter the patch, the tighter the engagement of the rifling, if it's a rifled barrel, and it's going to impart more spin on uh, at a tighter rate. So it's going to hopefully leave the barrel and then open up out of the patch and have a nice spin on as it's going. The, um, you know, sitting on a log here trying to relax, uh, <laughs> but my body heats, uh, even though we're in thermals, my body heats all the snow, so I'm getting, uh, getting slightly wet. Um, going with a 490, Start with a 10 thousandths patch, 0 0.0010. If you can, buy a uh, 15 thousandths patch as well. Um, 
you know, thickness, so it's going to be a little bit thicker. It's going to give you a tighter barrel engagement. Now, if you're having real crap uh, accuracy with any of those patch thicknesses or you're having a hard time loading, go to a thinner patch material for ease of loading. Go to a tighter patch material for more accuracy, in theory. Um, I have used 25 thousandths of an inch patch. Really had to hammer it down the barrel, and I've heard that bench rest shooters love doing this and, and getting a tight patch consistency, but I'll tell you what. I've gotten some great accuracy with just run on the mill patches. Things that affect your load development, ball size, patch thickness size, powder that you're using, so whether it's a 2F or a 3F, Pyrodex versus real black powder. Again, Pyrodex generates a faster, hotter combustion uh, with less. And um, obviously the charge weight that is going down the barrel. So if you're doing 50 grains of powder and then you want, and everyone tells you to do 100 grains of powder, that's going to throw it off either. There's a point where your gun, when you shoot it, is going to you know, be kind of a, a loose group if you're doing real light powder. And, then, uh, and it may be good tight consistency, but then you're going to get a hotter, say let's just start at 50 grains and it's going to be okay. You go to 60 grains and it's still okay or you know and you know it's not you moving all over uh, and then you get to 70 grains and it starts to shrink okay that's a good starting point for your gun like and everything with the every combination of what you're doing that means the powder the thickness of the patch the loading if you have a sprue which is that little top from a hand cast bullet if you're using swaged uh, hornady or spear balls you don't have to worry about that um, are you loading the ball dead center of the patch that you're pushing it down on um, like so when you seat it on the barrel if you get the patch and there's more patch to one side versus another as you're seating it that will actually affect your accuracy as well is it going to affect it if you're just planking yeah um, is it going to do uh, something terrible for you probably not I mean I've done a lot in my videos where I'm getting good results with no patch with patch with varied patches not caring how I do it but if I was putting food on the table and I was sighting my gun in I would try every time to use the same patch same powder charge and same loading procedure by seating it dead center and you'll sometimes in my older videos you'll see where um, when I'm showing some of the loading you'll see me kind of move things around because I'm trying to get equal patch thickness all the way around that barrel before I seat it the next thing is on your ball starter using that little bit right here as you push down trying to get that centered just right and then seating it with the rest of it uh, and then going down and then the last portion of that combination is seating all the way down to the barrel with the same pressure the same depth every time so marking your ramrod is something that I would highly recommend that you do um, you will get a feel for it eventually in each gun um, you know when you on a clean barrel you go down you're like yep hit that perfectly you do a couple of shots yep still going there do lots of shots and you're gonna kind of feel the corrosion on the inside that you got to get past always make sure you're seated fully to the same depth and that's where that ramrod marking helps so you've done all that you've got good form practice on there now how do I change things so what I would do is I would do 50 grains on a 50 cal um, I shot my deer this year with 60 grain charge that I run in all my videos on every one of my 50s and I've got complete pass-throughs uh, with round balls and I got complete pass-throughs with uh, Thompson Center uh, Maxi uh, the reels uh, REA so I've had good loading uh, across the board with 50, 60 grains of powder in my guns uh, with the Maxis the reels and reel stands for rifling engaged at loading that means it, you don't need a patch when you put that in there 60 grains across the board has gotten me almost consistent accuracy from round ball to regardless of what uh, weight bullet I'm doing, they'll actually all hit about the same and then I just have to determine which one I like and then I either raise my rear or lower the rear sight to, to bring it down um, or raise the rear sight to kind of adjust up or down as I'm going and then left or right is drifting throughout. Uh, there is some information out there, uh, other videos, and we can do that later, But uh, and I've talked about that, but once you realize that you got a good working combination with a round ball and patch thickness and a powder charge, now it's time to start messing around with that. So you've settled on, say, a 490 ball instead of the 495, and you've settled with a 10,000th patch instead of a, a 15,000th patch. At that point, you can use those 15,000 patches if you want, use them as cleaning, put them on the end of your jag and go down and save them, use them for a pinch, uh, use them if you ever get another gun. 
but buy up a ton of whatever patch works once you've sighted this in. Now here's where the kicker gets and it gets frustrating in the black powder world. So you're out in the woods, you're shooting your targets, or you're out at the range, you're shooting your targets, and you've got 60 grains and you think you're doing good and you're using a 10 thousandths patch and life's good and you've settled on this awesome load. And then you go to shoot and you can't find the same powder that you had um, you know, the, a year prior when you had it before. And so you have to switch from either Pirate X to real black powder. Well, that's going to change everything. And this is where keeping a detailed journal um, or notes or in your phone making lists. Um, I like to uh, uh, take video uh, you know, on my phone of my targets and make my, uh, notes into the video. Then I don't have to worry about it. I can just go back and watch it. But keeping journals on what uh, load you're using, where it's hitting, and um, you know what powder I've got is, is uh, awesome. If you can buy your powder, I would highly recommend buy powder online. Have it shipped to your house. I know you got to pay a hazmat fee sometimes, but if you catch the sales just right, you, you get that's inexpensive. The biggest thing is buy as much as you can of the same powder because they're probably going to send you the same lot of powder. So you've now got, let's say in this uh, 50 cal scenario, you're using 2F, 60 grains of powder, 490 ball, 10 thousandths patch. And I say, all right, well, now I'm going out west and I'm going to hunt elk. And I know I'm going to, I'm going to be on a guided hunt. And the guys are assuring me that it's, they're going to actually get me within bow distance of elk. And I want to use a patch round ball at 50 grains. All right, go for it. Now, they're going to say I want a minimum charge of uh, or foot pounds of energy uh, of X. Now, you can go online and calculate all that. But you say, all right, well, I know I want to push 100 grains of powder through there. Now what you need to go back to the range, take that 100 grain charge, and now you're going to work up a load. You're going to start with the 10 thousandths, 15 thousandths, 20 thousandths, um, you know, uh, patch. And you're going to practice with your load data. And what I would do is I'd start at your 60 grains and then go 70 grains, 80 grains, 90 grains, 100 grains, 110, 120 if your gun will handle it. And see what happens. And I would do that at five shot groups with proper cleaning techniques uh, between or swabbing your barrel. Whatever you're going to do there, keep it consistent between all your charges. So shoot five of 70 grains of your 490, 10 thousandths. Shoot five uh, with the 15 thousandths of 70 grains. Shoot five of the 20 thousandths of 70 grains. Then go to 80 grains and do the same thing. Eventually you're gonna find that your groups are gonna get smaller and then they're gonna get bigger. And if you're keeping your cleaning loading technique all the same, you are going to know that your methodology is working. So. Find a lighter hunting load. So here in the Northeast, uh, deer being a thin, light-gamed animal, I mean, you can put them down with a 22 with sh proper shot placement. Um, you can put them down with a massive gun. And I've had complete pass-throughs, uh, and deer keep walking, hit with a 4570, uh, you know, missed putting just off the shoulder, and then they're still wandering like nothing's happened because of the, the velocity and the energy, um, and they didn't have time to expand. I mean, they just passed right through. Um, so... You know, it doesn't take much to put down a, a deer with decent uh, shot placement. Out west, you're going to have a whole nother ball game. You've got longer shots. You've got um, harder, bigger animals sometimes to put down. You're going to work, uh, you know, differently on what you're doing. And same thing, if you're hunting a moose, uh, you know, you've got a bigger animal. You want more impact, more uh, devastation, and you want better pass-throughs, you, you know, you're going to pick a grain bullet and a powder charge to accommodate that uh, and the distance that you're hunting at. So patch development and load development, I'm sorry, load development requires patch consistency, loading consistency of whatever projectile you're using, and powder consistency. You can, if you only have Pyrodex at your stores and you say, all right, I, I don't want to have to worry about ordering online, uh, real black powder, then go with your Pyrodex and do the same thing. Start at 50 grains, 60 grains, 70 grains, 80 grains, 90 grains, 100 grains. Um, figure out where your best group is. Don't adjust your sights, just go for group size. It's just like you would, you would, you would shoot when you're sighting in a scope, you're going to aim dead center, and even if you hit four inches down low to the left, you're going to do five shots, and then you got a nice tight group. You know that the gun is grouping, it's not you pulling trigger. Now you're going to adjust your sights and go over. Same thing. Develop your load. And, you know, some people like to develop a light load and some people like to develop a heavy load. But what I would do is find what patch thickness that your gun likes and I would find a powder. And let's just say you have 3F and 2F. I would run, you know, back down 10 grains of powder by volume um, 
you know, if from 3F to 2F. And if you're going to go to 3F, uh, or 3, you know, going from 2F to 3F, because 3F is going to burn faster, generate more pressures, you don't need as much in 3F um, to get that same velocity. So you, at my 60 grain charge, I might start at 50 grains or even 40 grains. Uh, and this is where chronograph really helps out because you can say, okay, this gun likes to be at 1,500 feet a second. And, you know, you're running through there, and I'm like, all right, 1,500 feet a second. I've got lots of 3F, but I've only got a couple of pounds of 2F, and I want to save that for my shotgun or whatever. Then go to your uh, chronograph again, shoot some balls down there, and find where you're hitting that same foot per second, and you're probably going to find the best accuracy. So if you've got great accuracy at one foot per second with a certain load, you're going to be able to find that using the same velocity, same everything else, with that other powder. So using a chronograph is going to tell you a lot of information. If, again, a great tool to have and highly recommend you get one. I think mine's, the, again, the Pro Chrono. Now my crows are visiting. <laughs> so patch thickness, powder charge, and, uh, you know, type of powder, the main thing. Loading procedures, getting them seated on the bore or uh, yeah, across the, this muzzle equally. And using the same pressure of loading, trying to get the same depth, all that. Um, all the consistencies of this. This is what, uh, you know, if you're not patient, if you're impatient, um, you know, or you want something fast, this isn't the, the best sport to start in. Uh, unless somebody hands you a gun and says, this is a gun, it likes to shoot this, and it goes. Now, my uncle did that. He handed me a gun. He said, this gun loves 100 grains of powder. He goes, it shoots bullseyes, and he's won lots of matches with it, and, and I've seen him do it uh, with this gun. At 100 grains of powder, I can't hit anything with it and it's not that i can't handle 100 grains of powder because i can run 100 grains of powder through my other ones for whatever reason me and that combination of powder don't work and it's either how his sights are adjusted how he holds you know you know it, there's all those variances so that's why i say tuning these guns to you it is phenomenal. finding a, a good way and i would always recommend start with a slightly thinner patch and start with a lighter load than you think you need because every forum is covered with guys go, oh, you hunt with 90 grains, 100 grains of powder all day long. It's the best thing in the world, you know, for northeast deer or, you know, even I mean, Florida deer are, are tiny. Um, you know, so you can get away with a squirrel gun load. But uh, you don't need more, you know. Less is more when it comes to black powdering. So powder, um, you know, my 36, I'm running 20 grains of powder, and I probably could get away with 10 grains of powder, and I'm going to try that here eventually. Um, but... Uh, you know, my patch size, I started with a 15 thousandths ox yoke. Um, is it ox yoke or ox creek? I can never remember. RMS ox yoke makes great patches. Um, 15 thousandths. So they're the only ones who uh, make a, a generic cotton one pre-punched in various sizes in that 15 thousandths. And I like that because it's right in between 10 and 20 thousandths. Um, pillow ticking, if you're looking for patch material, go to the store. Uh, Walmart actually had a bunch and I bought, uh, I think, five or ten yards of... Um, uh, no, yeah, five or ten yards, uh, at least 15 yards maybe, of uh, pillow ticking. The problem is this pillow ticking is 21 thousandths of an inch thick. Now I'm going to be using it for other things, lining my bags and, um, you know, my possible bag. And there's some things on there that, uh, you know, I'm going to use it for, but I brought my calipers uh, to the store, and that was the lightest weight I could do. Now they do make it different, but finding a pure cotton, pure cotton material, um, you know, with your calipers at the store, you can measure that. Make sure you wash it. You know, just I just throw it in with some Dawn dish soap and wash it in the, the washing machine, put it in the dryer, and that gets everything kind of loosened up, softened up. And then you can cut at the muzzle if you want with a patch knife. Um, but the key to finding load development and is, is what do you want to use it for and, you know, how much energy do you need down the road. Um, I will shortly here do a video with a 50 cal for a lot of you 50 cal shooters out there. Um, you know, with the chronograph, I will shoot uh, the swaged round balls. I will shoot the uh, sprued uh, or sprueless, uh, or I'm sorry, the swaged round balls. I will shoot with the sprue, and then I'll try to do some of the uh, Hornady Great Plain Hunters and um, try to get you some chronograph data showing you, you know, start to finish. And if you look in some of my other videos, you'll see that with the chronograph data, I put in their foot pounds of energy. And that's, that, that is what you need to know about hunting. Um, 
when I did my load into a load data calculator of muzzle loading, there's a, a cool website and I cannot find it. Uh, I think it was put out by like Realtree or one of those companies who are doing one. I put in my load and my load data at 60 grains and my 50 actually put me into the big game elk category, moose category, brown bear category load because it's pumping out 1600 feet a second and the foot pound of energy is somewhere in the 700, 800, I, you know, I forget what it was, it was high and it actually puts me in that category. And so you, you actually can get away with a lot less than you think you need. Um, you know, because you're looking for the accuracy plus your terminal velocity. Um, so hope that helps a little bit in determining your patch thickness. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, personal preference when it comes to everything. Everybody will tell you this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. I'm going to tell you, start with some of the pre-lube patches uh, from Cabela's, Bass Pro, wherever you can find them, Log Cabin. If you want, they sell that Wonder Lube stuff, try some of those. And then also buy the same thing non-lubed and try it with what I use, that uh, Hoppies number 9 black powder bore solvent and lube. And you actually put it right up on the powder and it still ignites. Um, I found that to work the best. I used to use the Wonder Lubes. Um, I just found that they tend to gum up and get a little messier in the build, uh, barrel. Uh, you can use some Ballastol mixed with water. Uh, and I think it's like a 25% Ballastol to 75% water. And that's going to be called moose milk. Uh, you can do a 50-50 if you want. There's preference on everything. But every variable you change, um, or for every one variable you change, keep every other variable the same. Because if you change two variables unknowingly, you're going to have a lot of frustration. Um, and then I will leave you on, again, how do you clean after field use. Like today, I have not shot. You can see... There's some power, uh, snow coming on, but there's no water. So this gun will still go off. I'm not going to shoot it in this video, sorry, because um, I'm going to carry this for until I, you know, I've got animals and traps, and then I will use it there. Because um, once you pull the trigger on these, you are going to want to clean them within reason. If you shoot, like, uh, if you shoot one, and then reload right away, and then uh, and you're using like like in my case the hoppies, um, since it's a bore cleaner solvent and lube. I can, uh, I've actually gone a year after firing the gun once and running a new charge down and leaving it like that and I have had zero damage to the barrel. Um, you know, do I recommend that? No, that way I did that in an experiment probably two years ago on the other property and uh, you'll see where I say, yeah, I took it out after a year. And that was me just testing it. And when I cleaned it, you know, it took no, no more effort cleaning than not. Um, but a basic hot water method clean, which is, I, I do have a video for that. Do the hot water clean and then just put it away. The key to having fun with these guns is keeping the lock chan, uh, area on a percussion or flint lock clean free of crud and debris and keeping oil off of your powder and water and moisture off of your powder down in that chamber whether it's percussion or flintlock the biggest thing you can do to avoid <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the biggest thing you can do to avoid frustration um, is to like when I'm done here I'm going to take this pan I'm going to open it up and I'm going to dump that powder right back into my priming charge I'm not going to waste it, even though it's, there's only probably three grains of powder in that charge. Um, I'm not going to waste it. Why? It's still going to work. But I'm going to take that out. I'm going to bring it inside the house or, um, you know, lean it against the house. Because if I keep it outside this whole time and keep the muzzle, muzzle protected, um, you know, I, I've left this one out now since I bought it. I had it for three weeks sitting outside with a charge in it. And I fired it off in one of the videos. I didn't mention that, but... Um, you know, I did that just because it's already loaded and I'm not going to try to unload something just to go, you know, shoot it. Uh, and it went bang first time. Uh, actually, it was in that video where I shot this red squirrel. That uh, charge had been sitting for quite a while. Um, so keep that section of the gun clean. And you're going to go a lot farther in your happiness uh, level. I'll leave you with one little note. So before I started hot water cleaning, and this is just for those who don't hot water clean yet, 
Before hot water cleaning, I used to use the Track of the Wolf um, bore cleaner. It comes in their white bottle, and I forget, uh, I bought four or five different uh, bore cleaners from them, and I scrubbed, scrubbed, scrubbed. I've tried the Windex method and all these other things, but I just didn't do the basic hot water method. So I did everything, and I was getting fouling down in the barrel, right where the barrel and the breech meet, which is right behind that bolster uh, and where the, the powder sits. The biggest thing that happened to me consistently was I had failure to ignite um, across the board, and that is losing, uh, missing deer in Florida. That's missing hogs in Florida. That's missing deer uh, all throughout the Northeast and different places going with guns. I was out on different hunts in different states with some friends. I've missed, early on in my career, I missed a lot of animals because of lack of performance on the gun. And, and it comes down to it was me. So if you have a brand new gun, um, clean the barrel. Uh, you can also take a piece of steel wool and wrap it onto a cleaning uh, brush and polish up uh, everything. Or, uh, you know, what I do is instead of that, I just shoot the crap out of it. And that'll actually just kind of get you where you need to be. But when it comes down to it, making sure that you clean, and I would highly recommend do hot water method. There's lots of people's videos. I'll do another one here. Um, when, I, when I get this one uh, dirty, I will actually uh, clean it and we'll go through that process. But um, I had uh, shot a deer probably three years ago with uh, um, a black powder, uh, 50 cal, and it finally worked and it was a, a miracle it even went off. The ne and I reloaded the next morning. I had where the gut pile was, I was walking out. There was a beautiful coyote beautiful 25 yards in front of me never even saw me I raised the gun up pull the trigger cap goes off and <clears throat> this is a percussion cap goes off and coyote freaks out takes off running because the cap went off and I threw the gun I mean I threw it and uh, kind of like golfers do when they suck at uh, golf and uh, you're out there well that was me I was out uh, and I sucked at percussion and I sucked at flintlock because I just wasn't cleaning it with hot water method. As soon as I switched over that, my uncle told me, he goes, you're wasting your time. He goes, you'll be done in five minutes or less. Here we go. As soon as he's done that, I have never questioned my shots going off uh, until I got the sitting fox. <laughs> but uh, so the moral of the story is less is more when it comes to black powder. They're so simple. And the methods that our forefathers and ancestors used was simple. Hot water, basic lard for oil, whale oil, um, any oil animal rendered fat down. I mean, that's it. Nothing, there's no uh, fancy anything that you need to do with this. So hope this helps. Um, we'll go through some chronograph data and I'll probably do, like I said, do it with my 50 uh, since a lot of you have that and we'll get some data. Um, and we'll go from there, but you know, just start simple, keep it simple, and uh, stick with it. If you're frustrated, you're having trouble, reach out to a local club wherever you are. Uh, try to find some of the people who have been shooting for a long time. I call them old timers. Doesn't mean that they're old, it just means they've been doing it a long time. And uh, like anything, if you can find a mentor, uh, great. You know, I've had uh, you know, a few, uh, unfortunately. I don't have any that uh, come and do this with me, but I do have people I can talk to uh, for that. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps. And, uh, you know, don't let the weather stop you. I mean, my, my fingers are frozen. Uh, the rest of me is pretty good. But, uh, you know, try to get out. And uh, if you're still waiting to pull the trigger on a purchase in one of these, what better time than now, you know? Uh, you know, you can, you can enjoy the shooting sports since nobody can find ammo. Nobody can find primers. You know, everybody's hoarding everything. Um, you know, I would highly recommend now is the time to get into here because, uh, you know, it's a great way to maintain shooting and it's a, a, a wonderful way to increase follow through and teaching you back to the fundamentals um, that uh, I know, you know, I've been shooting since I was probably 14 and I'm 40 now. So, you know, I think that's like at least five years maybe maybe a little more i can't do math um but uh you know i know as i get scopes and i get the, the benefit of uh you know precision optics 
um, you know, going back to basic iron sights, just like, you know, bare bones archery that I do, um, you know, it helps me focus. And, uh, you know, you'll find you become a better shooter with these guns, uh, or you'll just get really frustrated and, you know, smash it against a tree, <laughs> uh, you know, or toss it uh, like I did. And, uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, come back to it and figure it out. But I uh, hope these pointers are helping you and you guys stay safe. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time.